Hello! Today we'll be looking at another charger and multi-function tool thing from Toolkit RC. But just before we get into it, a quick reminder as always to please like or dislike this video if you didn't like it. Comment down below, don't forget to subscribe, and if you can find it, click on that little bell icon, it'll tell you when I'm uploading stuff. So, Toolkit RC. You may recognise the name Toolkit RC, I've reviewed stuff before. This was the M8, it's kind of a, a multifunctional thing and charger with a mono display. Then we had the M6, which is kind of smaller, slightly less powerful charger, had a colour display. This one is called the M8S, which is very much like the M8 with the rotary button uh, and the same sort of display, same sort of power settings, but it's now got a colour display. So let's get it out of the box, see what's in there. It looks like this. We've got the normal retro display, we've got input as an XT60, output as an XT60, balance connector, USB out and server lead out. So very much the same as the original M8. And uh, under this little section here, got some brief sort of instructions. There's a full manual online. And we've got this USB lead, which is for updating it. So we really can't see much like that. So let's uh, go to close up, see what it can do. And I think it's a, a good chance to compare with these other two because, of course, now you've got three doing mostly the same sort of thing. What's what's right for you? Let's have a compare and see. OK, here we are. So let's turn on and go. I'm using my regular 350 watt power supply here and you will need something similar to run it. And here you go. You can see it's got quite a nice colour screen there. And I wanted to first, let's talk about the differences we had in the other ones. So first we got the, the regular M8, and then we got the little M6 here. One thing you will instantly notice, these two effectively do the same thing. This one, the little M6, is colour, but the screen, look how the difference on that screen. Um, I mean, this is actually easy to see to the eye, but the, my lights are absolutely wiping out, you can barely see anything going on. Uh, but basically it's the same screen there as that. Let's kind of try and move it into shot if we can, kind of. And we got a nice reflection of that light there. There's not a huge amount of difference between them. Let's talk about what they can charge at. Starting with a little M6, it can do one to six S at 10 amps. Then we've got the original M8 that can do one to eight S at 15 amps. And the new 8S, which can do one to eight S at 18 amps. With recycling, they can all discharge at the same rate that they can charge, and that means that the power is being discharged into another battery like this one. So again, 10 amps, 15 amps, 18 amps. Without that um, battery or whatever to recycle into, just on what they can do without it, this can discharge at 2 amps, this one 3 amps, this one 5 amps. They can all measure PWM, PPM and S bus. They can all measure voltages, internal resistance. These two can measure watts via an ESC measurement, which I still don't really understand, but they're all pretty similar. There's slight differences in the layout. This is sort of more up to date and stuff. It's a bit more friendly than that one. But other than that, they do essentially the same functions. So I'm going to get rid of these two for now because we kind of know what's happening and I'll put links for my reviews of these ones because of course the prices are different as well. Prices today and they're always subject to change of course and this is in pounds convert if you want to about £22, £33 just under £50. Okay with the others out of the way let's talk about its base function as a charger. If I take this nice uh, 5.2 amp multi-star battery here and plug it on in we've got the output uh, thing here. And with a battery plugged in, one thing we might want to do is measure it. And by doing that, we can see we've got the LiPo total and the cell voltage is there. Um, if we click again, uh, we can measure internal resistance. Let's test that. Pretty good figures, under 10s mostly. That's not so bad. And of course, we can go ahead and do the charging. Charge-wise, it's these little things at the top indicate your type of batteries you might need to have. It's kind of a shortcut really. So we've got this thing set up for LiPo. So obviously the battery type for that is LiPo, the end voltage is 4.2, it works out how many cells it's got and then we can do this cell charge on our by ourselves. In this case 
we can go up to 5.2 amps and we can take the discharge current. Oh, that's interesting. I saw the spec and read it and it said discharge current, you can get to 5 amps. This is saying, can I get a free? Anyway, so we can just say charge, charge 16.8 and it's away. And we've got a nice little display here, obviously, of the amount of watts we're putting in, the amount of milliamp hours we're putting in, a visual re representation of how full the battery is, each of the cell voltages, the overall voltage of the battery and the charge in amps that we're doing. This is telling us our input voltage, how long we've been going and our temperature. All pretty straightforward. If we stop that, uh, the other things we can do is of course, we might want to take it to storage charge. It's suggesting 3.85. It, it, some charges go 3.85, some want to go 3.8 I notice. So similarly, if we want to charge a completely different sort of battery, maybe we want to charge uh, an HV battery. So here's what I've got for flying the little sort of power whoops. It's got an XT30. This has only got an XT60. You will need uh, adapters. Here's one I made earlier. It doesn't come with them. That's the, uh, the word of warning there. So let's just hook this up quickly. Now, of course, we don't want to charge this to 4.2 because it's a high voltage battery. So if we go to new, we can say our battery type is a LIHV. There's also LIFE, LION, NIMH, PV. So we will go obviously with that. Cells are automatic. We only want to charge at 1C. Go to charge and we're away. So obviously you can connect all the batteries you need, you just need to make sure that you've got the adapter for it. As far as the charging goes, nice and simple, easy to use, I like the display, it seems to charge pretty accurately, gets back to storage absolutely fine and that's the most important thing. I see little intelligent charges like this quite often at meet events where people have got um, sort of massive 6S batteries as their power cells and they're basically transferring all that back into their sort of 4S for racing. Now we've done that, we've got that as saved. Uh, we might want to do a, a, sort of a specific one for a certain type of charge current or, or whatever, but yeah, you've got those three spaces there you can go ahead and save batteries. So going back to the main menu here, you obviously see we've got something called settings. I'm going to go there because I've realised what I've been doing is letting it beep. And last time I did that, people went crazy about the fact that um, there was a buzzer noise and they hated that. But we've got other things there. We've got a backlight. We can make it brighter or not as bright. Let's try it really bright. Uh, yeah, lots of different things. You, you can you can read it, so I'm not going to go through this. Absolutely, it's a charger. That's its main usage. But um, it has a bunch of functions as uh, a measurer and output. We've already looked at measuring the battery, uh, but we can measure other things like PWM, PPM, SBUS, and ESC. So PWM would be, for example, uh, an input from... A receiver. Here's one I found earlier and I really did find it. Uh, I talked about this just the other day. I reviewed the multi-protocol module and I talked about the V8 being very early type of FreeSky one. This this was a late V8. It actually did um, D8 mode. But let's plug this in and see if we can get something from it. It's flashing at the moment because we haven't turned on. Let me just turn on my radio. Right, we've now got a signal. You can see the light go off and uh, that's in the way. If we were to move our stick there you see we go down to well it should be a thousand to two thousand USEX. that's what uh, beta flight measures at this is slightly out but hovering around and we're back in the middle towards about 1500 which is about right PWM not heavily used these days but if you've got planes with individual channels you might just want to see if something's acting weird and it's not just as you thought it was PPM like PWM, but all in one channel. I haven't got anything that uh, output that at the moment, but um, SBUS, lots of us use SBUS, don't we? Here's a handy quad that's uh, got an old X4R on it, which outputs SBUS, so let's plug that in, see what we get. That's interesting, the fan just came on while I was waiting around there. So we've got SBUS here, and um, again, I, I can put my radio slightly in show if you like, and 
we can see as I move sticks we've got movement there. One thing I do particularly like about this one is that it will show the last 16 channels. You see that's channels 1 to 8 uh, and down there we have 9 to 16. Looks like I've got something on 9. Is that my OSD one? Or... Yeah, I've got a switch on 9 and I wouldn't see that on some things and you can see that's my RSSI there on 8 jumping around. If I put my if I put it into uh, range mode, yeah, that's going down a bit, isn't it? So for me, SBUS at the moment quite useful. If I've got something that's not working as, as I think it should, I mean, a lot of the times if you're on beta flight, that will help you diagnose things, but this is quite a nice bench thing to have. Okay, last in the measures, we've got ESC, and I struggle to understand what this is for, but I'll, I'll show you how I've done it, and feel free to point out if I've done it wrong. What we've got here is a servo connected to the ESC control, we've got the ESC powered up and at the end of it we have got a motor. It's showing us how many watts and how many amps. If I go to start and then you can hear the ESC start, if I put the throttle up it starts spinning, you can see 5 watts, 0.4 amps and we can put the throttle upwards and obviously that increases and then we can just stop it. Maybe this is good for understanding how many watts is going through at a certain amount of throttle. It's a little bit trickier to connect up. Your your normal sort of thing for that would be a watt meter like this where it would sort of plug in between the model and you can sort of stand a bit further away from it if you like but that that is a feature I put it there, I think I've done it right, uh, and that seems to be what it what it's for. And then we've got the outputs. We've got uh, power. Now I haven't got anything connected up here, but what we've got is the idea of, we've got a power supply coming into here, and we can use this as a bench power supply. It goes through the output, but we can do what we like. At the moment, it's saying it, we can put 12 volts at up to 10 amps out, and, and we can start any time we like. But we can obviously change that, and we can push that way down to, for example, let's say 5 volts or 3.3 volts or something, and that allows us the ability to test out individual components. We could test out cameras, VTXs, flight controllers, even anything like that. This comes with a couple of different options. So this is our custom one. It's got Mavic 2, Mavic S, Phantom, Inspire. I'm not quite sure how you're supposed to connect up to it because it's very specific uh, charge at very specific ampage but all these DJI things come with their own charger I'm not quite sure how you're supposed to connect these up to there in order to make it happen but as a bench power supply I think it's quite useful if you've got this sort of thing near your bench where you're working you can hook it up and it can be a temporary power supply for whatever you just have to wire in your XT60 to something uh, and then you've got your nor normal things you've got uh, PWM PWM, of course, using things like servos. Here's a servo I found earlier. I'm actually not sure if this is working. It feels very stiff, actually. So, And this is in manual. In manual mode, we can change the width, and you can see the servo arm move very slowly. We can also have some auto modes, which go at different speeds, up to about that speed which is quite handy. Can you actually go past the limit? It will let you go past the limit, so... Instead of being like 1000, 2000, you can try and push past where you could go and get it all the way up, practically making a, a 180 degree servo where it might not be comfortable in going a whole 180 degrees. Yeah, we can go all the way down to, what, 500 U6? Yeah, that's a full 180 rotation. Interesting. We can also output PPM and SBUS, and in this sort of situation, um, it's basically set it so the throttle's off, but we can go to any one of these uh, and basically alter what we want to do, and that will pass it through to whatever. Sometimes handy, you've got certain things you would hook up to, and perhaps things are indicated by lights or something. It might be useful. I, I would tend to do this using your radio control and, and sort of the, the weight, but I guess not all 
radios are as friendly as OpenTX ones, so there is that. But that's got that, and it's almost identical uh, for S Bus. Same sort of thing. You've got all the channels there that you can output all these bits in, and that is essentially it. Mostly a charger, but with some useful functions as well. Quite a nice little screen. The, the thing not to forget with all these types of chargers is you will need something to run it on, so some sort of power supply. Uh, Toolkit RC, I know it's did their own one, but it's a bit expensive. It's like as expensive as a charger. There are some cheaper ones available. I'll link down to both of them so you can see. Of course, you can run this as a portable charger. As I mentioned, people at race meets would use a much bigger battery than this, uh, 6S or bigger, and they'd plug it into the back and basically run all their 4S charges and discharges through the day through this sort of thing like that. So that's an option as well. Just one thing I forgot to show in test is the USB output. There's a USB socket here. It can charge your USB device up to 2.1 amps, obviously at five volts. So if you've got stuff to plug in at the same time, that's cool. So pretty nice. It's a really good charger. I really like the display and the screen and it does all these extra things as a bit of a bonus, which is pretty good. I suppose the only downside is, as these have come along, and all the Toolkit RC stuff has been pretty good actually, the, the price has sort of crept up. So it was this was cheap, this was slightly more expensive, but still pretty cheap. Uh, and this is going up towards the sort of £50, $50 mark, which is more expensive. Although if you were gonna spend about £50 on a charger anyway, it's pretty cool to have this with all these extra features and test and diagnostic stuff and bench power supplies and that sort of thing. It's really gonna come down with what are the features you like in a charger. For me, I didn't particularly like the M6. It's nice and cheap, but the, the display wasn't that bright. I didn't like the touch interface particularly. Um, it just wasn't my cup of tea. I, I love the original M8. I like the rotary display. It was a mono display, but it was nice and bright and you could really see it. It did everything. And, and this just ups it. The, the interface has been slightly redesigned to be more friendly. I really do like the color screen, but it comes down to like, oh, do I want to pay a little bit less and have that? Or do I want to have the nice color screen and have this? It, your mileage may vary. I mean, it depends what you can afford, really. I'd quite like the top of the line stuff, obviously, as we all do, but there you go. Anyway, I should say this has been the Toolkit RC M8S and was kindly provided for review by Banggood. Thanks, Banggood. Of course, you can find links down below and I will link to the reviews of these other things. So if you're in the market for a charger, check them out, see if one of these uh, floats your boat. Hope that review has been helpful and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.